Joining me, you know what we're going to do? I'm going to try and get into a habit, and if I can remember enough, and I'll get into the habit of going over our schedule for today, for each class, because that, I think, will entice you to watch the other classrooms. So let's take a look. Already we had the early bird classroom, which starts at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time. And we were reading, we are reading our stories from Children's Illustrated Bible, which is... right here. Here's our children's illustrated Bible. These are stories retold by Selena Hastings and illustrated by Eric Thomas. Eric, just so the illustrations of story women's history month. And we did so yesterday on day 133. Today we are on day 134 of our classroom. Who could believe it? What's that mess all of a sudden? Let that voodoo hippie put that on there. What's up with that? I don't usually do that. In fact, I haven't had to touch these letters up yet. That's how unusual this mess is. Anyway, so today in our bookless classroom, we're going to try and get through because it's so good and it stops me. And you know me, I'm just gabbing away, going, holy smokes. I hope I have enough material to fill the hour. <laughs> I know. I know. I do think that a lot. I hope I have enough material to fill the hour. Anyway. So sometimes I color just in case. No, I don't know how this got like totally destroyed. Uh, yeah, learning about Jesus and also, yeah. So come to the early birds and see that. Today we are going to try and get through our reading, which is on capitalism and labor, and get to our story, which is from Cornerstones of Freedom, on the Spanish-American War. Uh, and then we will also go to, in our engaging, we are talking about pharmaceuticals. And on the, who knew that performance-enhancing drugs was gonna be like a whole complete subset of pharmaceuticals, which are basically marketed towards rich people. Oh my gosh, can I see your marketing scheme all over the place? Oh, makes me wanna, ugh. But not in my coffee. Okay. <laughs> I just saw Seth Meyer on his show. Oh my gosh, he's, he's crazy. He keeps going through my mind. I, he, he cracks me up. <laughs> he cracks me up. Okay. So that's engaging. Today we are going to probably move on to, we'll see if we get enough time. I always kind of give you a preview because I'm a little more prepared for talking less and I talk more and so the stuff bleeds over to the next day, right? Which is four days off, after four days off, right? Three days on, four days off. Uh, so today we might get to Okay, we're reconnected again. All right, and so if, um, yeah, if I went into all that, it would just take forever, which I can't, but today we are going to try, and maybe we'll touch on, we've already touched on it already in this class now, is human growth hormone. Uh, and, and then, so again, as I was saying, too, think about that, we're marketing to two different sets of people as performance enhancing drugs I see has exploded as much as disease drugs. So, so the market, the pharmaceutical market is taking a lesson from the sort of uh, health gurus. You know, they're saying there needs to be a different way. Oh, okay. So we'll, we'll work on performance enhancing drugs then for the well-being of people. They're so cracked 
they are so cracked that the name crack cocaine is named after these crack whores. DIY psychologists. And now this was almost an engaging and now it's moving into a DIY, all right? So we had to engage you with the idea of science and technology is not a God, basically. And, and their theories are bullshit and they're not, e not even close to scientific. So the whole, what's a great experiment? Let's see if we can sell them science without having a lick of science. That's a great experiment. I was reading in the Mark Twain book, Mark Twain and uh, Huey, Dewey, Louie. <laughs> Warner. Charlie Dewey Warner um, from Warner Brothers. And so they put out a book. Oh, dear gosh. How can I not even remember the name? I'm just stumbling through. They always have to get me on the most ridiculous picture as well. It's just a, it's just a reconnected successfully imagine that this is what they're doing this is how they're reconnecting i got some monkey at the at the at the helm there some ape man some ape man fascist at the helm is what they got going on there okay so in this classroom I did pick up the book, the Mark Twain book on the Gilded Era to learn more about it. It's 500 pages. It is not an easy read, but you can find it on YouTube. I happen to get more out of it because I'm not doing other things when I listen on YouTube and then read it along. So, so along with them. So that's what I've been doing. So I've been that's what self. Okay. So, um, so I'm reading the book, and this is going to freak you guys out because it totally freaks me out. Let me get All right, reconnected. So one of the first times that I was over at my husband's family's place, like five minutes out of my presentation, which is just ridiculous. That is, that is absolutely ridiculous no service that's capitalism that is capitalism i'll take away her rights to be able to stream because i can and i don't like what she's saying it's censor it's censorship that's what it is okay so anyway all right reconnected successfully so uh there's no heat and goes to show you disconnect reconnect i'll reconnect I'll reconnect. So we go to sit down and it's freezing in the house. And my husband's like, well, it's a wood burner. I'm like, I've been in wood burning homes and typically wood burning homes. The problem is, is that they're overheated. Not that they're underheated. If you have wood in there, did you check the wood? I checked. There's a light in there. What do you mean? There's a light in there. I checked, there's a light in there. Is there heat? So I'm like, okay, the house is so cold. I'm getting right down there by the furnace. And my husband's like an alien. Because there were just weird things like he wouldn't. Or another great look, they got me stopped on. Okay. All right. So I said, I'm going downstairs and I am going to put a chair down by the fire. And I'm like, that's no fire. Did you put wood in the fire? And now I don't want to embarrass him. Right. Cause I'm like, all right, I see there's a light in there, but it looks like a light. And I'm like, how is there not any heat coming off of this wood, iron wood burning stove? It's like you, you, you shouldn't even be able to put your finger on that wood burning stove. And I'm, you know, this close to it and I'm not getting any heat. 
So I make him come downstairs because I'm like, I'm not going to open that without you, you seeing. I'm not going to, you know, investigate your home. And he's upstairs because he's afraid to go in the basement. So, yeah, funny, you guys. With all your voodoo over here and my signal and my hair. Bunch of parasites is what you guys are. Not you guys in the bookless classroom. I'm talking about those people who are sitting over there screwing with my signal and can't get, somehow get a signal. All right, it's back on. <clears throat> so, I tell him to come downstairs and I'm going to investigate this. So, I'm like, look, I'm this close and nothing. I'm this close and nothing. And so, I start to touch it and expect it to be hot. Like, there should be, uh, you know, something to grab the outside of that and open up that door. There's nothing there to grab it. So, I'm like, touching it. It's not hot. Grab it, open it up. There's a candle inside or a light inside. I think it was a candle. It was a candle. And I was like beside myself. Like, like WTF. What is going on here? And that's not what WTF said. What is going on here? What is going on here? What is the matter with this freak show that you have a candle in there and somehow you think that's supposed to heat up this, what did you say it is? 3,000 square foot home. I get it's an old fashioned home, but it's still 3,000 square feet and you somehow in your mind, what? The F is going on. This is the truth. And that's what is in Mark's tw Mark Twain's story. Believe it or not. Hold on. I got to get my water. Okay, so usually can hack a degenerate. Somebody who would sit over there and rather watch somebody get chopped up in their audio instead of watching it with the audio off. They'd rather have the choppy audio like that, thinking it's hysterical. That's a degenerate. All right, a degenerate are people who walk around town in disguises like, oh, what was your name downtown? I don't even remember your name. Hysterical Xfinity, just hysterical. Oh, what, now you're going to connect me because I said your name? Say my name, say my name. <clears throat> anyway. And especially in the bookless classroom, both classrooms, early birds, they want me to cuss so that it's not an early bird classroom. And this classroom, a bookless classroom, they want me to screw up the history so that the history is not reported. So you can read the Mark Twain book, The Gilded Era. And in it, he's, it is the perfect example of what the Gilded Era is about, which is there is a light in <laughs> you guys are just, mm. you think you're yanking somebody's chain when you're not. I mean, you could disrupt people's thoughts all day and all night if you want to. Big deal. You're just an ape. You're just an ape. Stopping real thought. So anyway... I'll continue, and now when I continue with my coherent thoughts, that's when they'll start chopping it up. So, that is a complete symbol of the Gilded Era. 
and that is having the perception of heat and thinking that that is enough for people. That is science. That is where science and technology went. Remember where we started with all of this. We started with this with the eugenics movement, right? So, and the idea of the rise of science and technology left people with making a choice. And that's, all right, reconnected. So, or do you want to have what? And when something is undemocratic, what they end up doing is completely misrepresenting anything that they want. In any way, they misrepresent the facts. So if somebody calls them on well, I could, I'll, I, if I have to watch it, I'll watch it, but I'm not going to watch it with the audio on. Oh, you're making me watch it with the audio on? Well, then I'll just chop up her audio so it doesn't, is, so nothing is coherent about it. So we're going to talk more about that in the DIY, this real um, visceral. What visceral is, is a physical reaction. A physical reaction, right? That is so adverse that what they turn it into honestly is an ejaculation and that's just the truth their physical anger they don't know what to do with and so they literally turn it into an ejaculation and that is um well that's misogyny is what that is that is, that's a visceral hate. So a visceral hate is something that's physical and the worst kind of visceral hate to women in Women's History Month, right? The worst kind of visceral hate is when those men turn that hate into ejaculate. Did you expect me to say that? Whatever, Haley, whatever your name is. Hannah, did you expect me to say ejaculate? And then mimic on a green screen. Really? On a green screen? See, the thing is, is somebody's feeding you information. And in any picture, it's not the right information. It's not all the information, no matter what, no matter if you're, you know, higher than high, <laughs> it still may not be all the information. You may be getting classified this and classified that. It still may not be all. So you're collecting data from everyone. Oh, you got to get younger people data collected, whatever it, it and that's, you know, now what they're doing, that's why they get rid of me because I said, watch what they're going to do next. They're going to be collecting student data. And if teachers aren't saying anything. All right, reconnected. So. I did. Congratulations. She, no, I got it. So. The perception, we are always being fed misinformation or at the very least, not all the information. But the best that we can do is trust and our God above, really, that he is going to be giving us the information we need in order to make the decisions that we need to make, that we were put on this planet to make. Not that decision for that person or for that institution. Because it wasn't 3,000 square foot home that many of us middle class people imagine. No, not that home. And I was so mad at his dad. And it was only Stuart and I that I waited and to confront him. But I waited until all my anger had gone down before I confronted him about it. 
And I and I was like, you think that the perception of heat somehow gives us heat? Are you some kind of Simon Bar sinister? Are you a mad scientist that you would, it is no wonder your family never visits you. I will never come back to this house again until you have what is real heat in that furnace. You have wood all over this place. You get some of the wood in that furnace and you heat up this house. I'm going downstairs. I waited to tell him. Or maybe I put all the wood in. I don't remember if I waited or not. I, pro I, I probably didn't because the whole house was so cold. I was just like, that is just unbelievable. I said, you, I, I probably told my husband, to split. you split wood right now and you get wood in that furnace right now. Are you kidding me? And then and, and as I confronted his dad, it was, do you suppose that all you need is the perception of food? I could give you the perception of food and that would be enough to fill your belly. What is the matter with you? Again, what is, there's a matter there. There is something of substance. You can touch it and feel it. It's that severe. It is that apparent that there is a matter inside of you what is that matter that would make you think your children would be warm because they have the thought or perception of heat because there's a candle glow? No, Dada. Another silly face. Imagine how they could stop. I okay, right now. Bam. Ugh. They're trying to get me to respond. And that's what they're doing. They're just seeing to what extent they can mind meld with me to get me to respond the way they want me to respond for what? For their gambling habits, of course. That's what. Because they're all losing their money. Because they expected me to say the J word. And I didn't say it. I said ejaculate. That's not a J word. Early birds know that. That's awesome. That is awesome. Do you see you are not the maestro of this show? Of You are not the master puppeteer? Do you not see that? Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, so let's go to our the rest of our capitalism. See what's going to happen? I'm going to be 45 minutes into the show before we ever start anything. Not quite. Mm. 35. <laughs> okay. Now. Okay. Collect your thoughts. I know. I have to watch the control panel. I have to watch the signal. I have to keep my thoughts together. I'm bringing up such an unbelievable how did my husband do that? That's in the Mark Twain book. I mean, I get this one. I told you, Alfred Camus, he wrote those books. Alfred Camus died in 1956. I don't know. No comprendo. Which brings me to my segue to the Spanish-American War coming up soon. That I can. Comprendo. Pueblo. Comprendo. No, comprenado. Oh, I think I got that right. Me my Spanglish. Me my Spanglish. I think I got that Spanglish right. All right. 
You know something we haven't done in a little while? Well, I, at least if you're going to see, let's do this. At least if you're going to see my search face, even in my search face. Let's do it. <laughs> Folks, let's see what we have going on here. Oh, you know what happened? That whole thing kept screwing up yesterday, and look what happened. It's not highlighted like it was like I left it. Oh, those kind of little things just really make. But but okay. All right, who stored crops in warehouses and awaited higher market prices. Let's see if I can't get this. Okay, I know we had Weaver highlighted.
I'm reading this to myself. Did we read this? I know we didn't go down this far. So let's go right here. So what do we have? We have William Jennings Bryan and the politics of gold. Remember yesterday I had such a hard time highlighting this and I had a closed down preview a whole bunch of times. And then I open it back up at the end there and we got a few things in and I don't know why they're not there. Okay. So, William Jennings, Brian, and the politics of gold. William Jennings, Brian, 1896. That guy's a looker. I'm just saying. He's a looker. William Jennings Bryan, March 19th, 1860 to July 26th, 1925, accomplished many different things in his life. He, he was a skilled orator, a Nebraska congressman, a three-time presidential candidate, U.S. Secretary of State under Woodrow Wilson, and a lawyer who supported prohibition and opposed Darwin, Darwinism, most notably in the 1925 Scopes Monkey Trial. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. I've got that up there. I've got the Scopes Monkey Trail up here. I have been waiting for an opportunity to talk about that. And I, so, okay, so we did not get this far. Oh, ladies and gents, I'm going to show you. Not in that bad way. Tell me I didn't close it. All right, I'm going to um, start sharing with you what I'm looking at now. Because this is the stuff that weird things happen are made from. Not really, though. All right, so here is... The stuff that I am researching as I'm doing your class. All right. So that, that's what I'm looking at right now are the Google. Oh my gosh. I'm so happy I called this up. I just really am. There's Charles Dudley Warner. Charles Dudley Warner was the other author of the Mark Twain book, The Gilded Era. So you could see this is sort of the background searches that I've been doing on the work that I've been kind of trying to do here. So there's the book I'm talking about. Mark Twain, Charles Dudley Warner, The Gilded Age, A Tale of Today. And of course, not today. But in that story, you could see the borrower is unavailable. I got that because of the title. I was able to see the title. So here are the other links that I've been using across time for this class. You can see that was a doll experiment there, right? And we're getting to this, this timeline. There's my American YOI people that we're reading from. There's another timeline I want to present or at least look at. There's the Nuremberg trials, which we're not going to get to for a little while. Why was that article? Why, why aren't we getting older articles instead of the new articles? Panic. Contraband. Hold on. Oh, don't tell me. I, I actually did. All right. I don't know where it is. But what I am going to do is show you, which almost nobody will do. My history. And watch.
right there. That's where I was. Right here on the Scopes Monkey Trial. And this was so interesting. So I'm so excited that we are, that I found, I knew if I had left it up on my desk long enough, my desktop, which clearly I did not leave it up there. I, I think I just deleted it like just the other day. I'm like, all right, if it comes to me, it comes to me. But this is mixing things up because I don't need it here. Actually, do you want to know where I think it is? I think it was in with my, um, Let's see if it's in there. Let's do it. Let's look. Oh, I can't believe it. It might be there. Hold on. So this is for our engaging, right? So all I'm going to do is just go through my engaging things over here. But I think it's this way. Maybe, maybe I didn't delete it. But you'll just be able to see all the things. All right, I know it's not that way anymore. Where was I? I left the caffeine chart up there. I left Vix Vapor Rub up there, which I'm also not using yet. Did she leave the Scopes Monkey Trial up there? No, I didn't. I deleted it. That's what we're talking about later. HGH right there. Get into my... Oh, it doesn't matter. The fact of the matter is, is that I am so excited that we are getting to... That Scopes Monkey Trial. And now I have a reason to get to it. Because I know a little bit about it. I went to go see. I went to a conference. And, and this was the legal beginnings of the eugenics movement. Now remember what I said. The United States. I got to at least make sure I'm not kicked out yet. I have to look at the control panel is what I'm saying. Okay, not kicked out yet. That is the legal foundation for the eugenics movement. What they call the eugenics movement. What I'm calling is the parasitic movement. Honest to God. I think I'm going to call it the parasitic movement. Which is the, I called it the psychogenics movement. Is a parasitic movement. All right? Psychogen, I got to write that down. Psychogenics. What a good pen I have right now. Okay, so the Scopes trial is the legal foundation. Is that what I got here? No, not there. For, here we go. What they call the eugenics movement. So they're calling it good genes as a play on words to convince you that what they're doing is great. But they... They started the war in Germany with that nutso Hitler there. So they got a whacked out guy. They sent him on a mission, which was probably likely since he was little, they trained him to be this, the leader, right, of Germany and to lead this movement to annihilate the Jews. So when you think about that is realistically the roots of the movement to annihilate the Jews, you have to really, because that was what was accomplished. So that had to be, I mean, I'm not saying other groups were not, but you were talking about a you know, much smaller percentage of the people relative to the population and centuries of efforts to annihilate them, right? Oh, I'm watching my video over there, me dancing. Not very good. in the control room. So, but remember what I said, World War II, we're going to find this out from World War I and World War II, that what did they do? 
they sat back, the United States sat back and watched to see who was going to win that war. They really had all the players in place to win that war. And that's what the Third World War would be about, would have been about. All right, what did you need to do the third time around? You needed to annihilate their hopes and their dreams. And, their, and, and in order to do that, you needed to annihilate their God. Who is on the bandwagon to annihilate the Jews? Haven't you noticed that those people, I read, I read a Lamplighter article about that, uh, which is like, haven't you noticed that you can't do it? It should have been the easiest task in the world. Everybody's been pointing their guns at them. I wonder why. Maybe their God really is powerful. Maybe their God really does exist. Who's that God? God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Oh, I've heard of him. Yeah. Good thing. Okay, so... So interesting. The, oh, so now I'm going to, that's what we're going to talk about. Three days off. I'm going to do my research, find my articles on the Scopes Monkey Trial. And if you want to do anything that would get you ready for that, I'll tell you what you can do to get ready for that. Is that Safari really? Okay. Now I have introduced this, and I don't care if I introduce it a million times. You need to watch this. This video, Human Zoos, was done by, put together by Dr. John West. And... ...to terms really embedded... Or if you view remember, of this is human evolution. You have the Teutonic male on the top, the sort of Germanic male, and then at the bottom you had some creatures that looked uh, partly like apes, partly like Jews. He was also anti-Semitic. And in the middle, you had the transition from the ape-like creatures to the first human creatures. The ape-like creatures look pretty much like they're Africans. And the takeaway point that Ernst Haeckel had from this graph was that the difference between the highest human being and the lowest human being, the gap between the highest Teutonic male and the first human being that was just one step above the apes was larger than the gap between the lowest human being and the highest ape. At the St. Louis World Fair, William McGee expressed a similar view, arguing that scientists had now shown the structure of the lowest humans more nearly resembles that of the highest ape-like animals than that of the highest humans. Like other scientists of the era, McGee saw primitive non-white peoples as living evidence of man's evolutionary history. The savage stands strikingly close to subhuman species in every aspect of mentality, as well as in bodily habits and bodily structure. McGee was determined to use primitive peoples at the fair to dramatize for the public the different stages of human evolution, beginning with... This, these are our scientists. There are scientists. This he considered lowest on the evolutionary scale. McGee arranged oh, for and native... by the way, we, we were saying this about every single third world person... Every single person in every single third world country. That's what we are saying about every single person in every single third world country. That's what we're saying and about every single brown person. ...to be put on display in villages designed to recreate their native habitats. These villages were enclosed by fences making them truly seem like human zoos. More than four million fairgoers reportedly visited these anthropological displays, eagerly staring at and poking at the indigenous peoples in their enclosures. Adding to the indignities, native peoples were pressured to participate in a series of athletic contests designed to show they were biologically inferior to whites. 
Those on display were also subjected to experiments in a special laboratory set up by the Fair's Anthropology Department. Directed by a psychology professor from Columbia University, the lab conducted tests to measure native people's intelligence and physical features, and even their threshold for pain. Some scientists came to the Fair. Now you can find that information, which is also some, the name that keeps coming up here. You can find that information in Stephen J. Gould's book. Have we heard that name? J. Gould, guy who took all the gold. Stephen J. Gould's book, The Mismeasure of Man. Now this is very interesting because Stephen J. Gould was clearly opposed to this eugenics movement, but he was also an atheist. So I, I've, I've read Mismeasure of Man. I started reading his Hedgehog, Mouse Hedge or something. It was, it was so off the, for me. Hold on. I gotta wait till we reconnect. Okay, looks like we didn't disconnect, so I guess we don't have to reconnect. All right, but there was, it was a, like a whatever. You know, you know what I'm saying. All right, so this is amazing. And by the way, folks, this is where we started this whole idea of science and technology. So we're coming finally full circle on where we started with our bookless classroom, which is where I wanted to get to um, theoretically which is to that World Fair, which was in 1902 or 1903. Trust me, if you, if you remember, that's the reason why I had these Time Warner books, Charles Dudley Warner. Maybe that's why they put Dud on your license plate and you didn't want it, because they knew you were Charles Dudley Warner, Stu. Did you know that? Did you think that? 1870 to 1900, right? So, but he wasn't going to have Dud on his license plate. He could have Charlie, but he wasn't going to have Dud. He couldn't have Charlie because that's Charlie's. Whatever. And that's why I picked up these two books. And that's when I said, and remember where we were at? We were talking about Pinkerton. That's where we left off too with Pinkerton. So this is good stuff. The way, when you do investigation, and don't forget, we're doing investigations in the things that we like, right? That's where we really do our deeper dives are on the things that we love. We don't go do doing in this classroom. We do our deeper dives on the things we love, not on the things we don't love, right? We have to learn how to do it. We have to learn the process, right? But I'm just thinking about other things sometimes. Uh, all these, but we're finally coming full circle. All of this stuff we had to get through to get to this point, and finally they say it scopes monkey trial. Oh my gosh, we're here! We're here. I get that you don't get it, but my whole aim of this whole after reconstruction. Gilded Era was to bring up, to uproot, so Reconstruction, with the Reconstruction, so I, because I, I didn't know it's called the Gilded Era when we got to it. So within the Reconstruction, my whole goal was to get to this World Fair, this World Fair, and finally, it's mentioned the Scopes Monkey Trial. This was a big, big deal, but we're not there yet, so we're going there uh, after our four days off so I can get my stuff going for you. Let's see here. Oh, are we supposed to be done? We're supposed to be done. And again, another day. We're still not to Spanish-American War. Oh! Yeah, I am done. So let me... What was that? That was a little scary. Look at where we're at here. 
So I'm going to look up this William Jennings Bryan, who was against this whole Scopes Monkey trial. And that guy, I'm telling you, <laughs> he looks really familiar. <laughs> You're a good looking guy, dude. We're going to end right there with that, with that, with that. Because I'm really, that's awesome that you were going against this stuff. William Jennings Bryan. Okay, so <laughs> I won't. <laughs> no, we'll end with my logo. <laughs>